So this is my way to overcome unwholesome thought or negative mind state is very useful and very important. Eh? So then we has read two. Eh? The first two. Do you realize they are still thought based? The first one is think of the opposite unwholesome thought. That's why you use thought and that's not thought based. But initially it's good. Like when you have a lot of anger, hatred, then you think of the opposite wholesome thought, metta, or karuna, compassion, then your cruelty is gone. Then you wish people well being and happy. May all beings be well and happy. So when you have metta, you cannot have anger in it. Your one can only have one mind state at a time. So it's a skillful mean to think of the opposite wholesome thought to counter the unwholesome thought. So when you read it, the opposite wholesome thought, the unwholesome thought will cease. Uh, and this is also what Hui Ning told the disciple. He said, after his passing away, whatever you teach, when people ask you something, you should speak the opposite. Yeah. But this is still thought-based. Huh? That's why he said, think of the opposite for some thought. So initially, it's okay, it works. Huh? But it will not root out your problem. Well, every time you got anger, <laughs> you can think of the opposite for some thought. Means temporary. Temporary. Then number two, think of the consequence. Huh? This one will like wake you up. So it's still think, thought base. Yeah? Uh, but initial skills for me. Yeah? So like the think of the consequence of holding on to all these evil roots, the wrong thought, your anger, your hatred, your jealousy, your envy. Why is it dangerous? Because when you are angry, you can kill, you can harm, you can make mistakes. That is the consequence. Your life, your karma, you choose how you want to live your life. You want to take care of karma, you must root out all this wrong thought and evil root. That's why think of the consequence of holding on to this wrong thought. It's very important. Yeah. So, there is a famous saying, when you really forgive, when you really can forgive, you actually free yourself. Do you understand? Uh, that I really understand now. I wish to ask for forgiveness from you. That's why the, te the teacher of Sakyamuni Buddha, he taught us how to ask for forgiveness. And Mahayana expanded on it by further moving into from forgiveness to repentance. Repent means what? You will never do it again, understand? No? Forgive, never say repent. No? No. They may forgive. But if you truly forgive, what happens? Means no more enmity with that guy. No, no more dislike and all those things. Means what? your hatred towards him, your anger towards him, no more in that. You actually free yourself, understand? No? Don't think that you forgive him. No. Cultivating forgiveness is to free yourself. That's why all these are virtue, gratitude, compassion, contentment, forgiveness, generosity. All these are virtue. When you cultivate them, you develop wholesomeness. You free your mind state from all the negative tendency. Without virtue, you cannot free from the negative tendency. So this is a very important understanding. But the first and second way is still thought based. We are involved thinking on ourselves. That's why it's not a permanent solution. It won't root out your evil roots. It won't prevent you from getting angry again or fearful again or developing all the negativity of mind state of fear, worry, anxiety, sorrow, lamentation, insecurity or phobia, scars of memory, all this, they will continue to haunt you. The only way to root it out completely is the third and the fourth way. 
So the third way is relax and maintain awareness. Means what? The four support, remember I taught you the first two. Relax and maintain awareness via one. Just let things be. Means don't try to resist what happened. Because what happened is the reality. Suchness. Like the Buddha said, condition like that, things will be like that. Whatever that arises, there are causes and conditions behind. So let's say you're confronted with first noble truth reality afflicting you. That reality manifests with it. So the Buddha's advice is whatever arises, there are causes and conditions behind. So what are the likely causes and conditions behind? You check the other essential Dhamma. Then you look at the five daily contemplation. The fifth one. Oh, the Buddha said, we are all born of our karma, heir to our karma, conditioned and supported by our karma. And we are what we are because of karma. So very likely, it has a lot to do with karma. Understand or not? So that is the first right view, noble eightfold power. When I know it's karmic, I shouldn't react foolishly, understand or not? Become unhappy, blame God, blame everybody. Then try to revenge or whatever. No. Once you know this is coming, you reap what you sow. In the past you did all this. Now you become the victim. Fair. So fair. Then how you act? Right view leading to right thought, right spirit, right action, the no way for one. So the right way to act is to accept the reality so that your mind is peaceful. But when you accept, you don't get angry anymore. You don't react and stir your mind. You don't create unnecessary, what they say, fear, worry, anxiety over that problem. Like health problem or financial or separation problem, whatever. So once you accept, you become at peace with the reality. Then what happens is, that will give you a calm and clear mind to investigate and act. Then you inquire, how can I resolve it amicably? Then how can I, after that, move on with my life? And that is how you should act. So to act that way, you need wisdom. You need understanding. So the Buddha taught us, if it's karmic, first thing you must do is what? Ah, ask for forgiveness, seek repentance. That is the advice of the Buddha. If I ask for forgiveness, may I know this is wrong. I repent, means I will not do it again. So you vow from this moment onward, you will not commit all this negativity of karma again. Then you seek forgiveness. Then the karmic obstruction weakened. And then there is condition for you to actually recovered from it. If the karmic obstruction is still there, nobody can help you. Whatever you do in your use, somehow the karmic obstruction will come in and obstruct you and give you problem. So what happens is when you ask for forgiveness, the nature's law actually develop its own movement and bring forth the causes and conditions for you to have the condition to seek help and recover. So you're supposed to do what you have to do. Ask for forgiveness, vow not to repeat all this, yeah, by following the advice of the Buddha. The advice of the Buddha is to avoid all evil, keep your prison, then cultivate wholesomeness wherever possible, follow noble eightfold path. Then after that, purify your mind to develop wisdom, not to be deluded and afflicted. Now this is what you must do. When you follow the advice of the Buddha and do all this, keep your precept, follow Noble Eightfold Path, then meditate, purify your mind, develop the right view and all that. Then it will bring forth great merits, understand? A lot of wholesomeness. 
but you need to do for a period of time for new people at least three months or one. Then after that, you invoke power of merits by the power of this merit or sincerity, like Angulimala. Ever since he has taken birth in the noble life, means after he has ordained and become a monk, he has not violated that precept. So he evoked that power uh, by this truth. May the mother and the fetus uh, be properly uh, born into this world. Uh, so may no harm come to them. May they have a smooth and good birth. That's why the Angulimala Sutta becomes so famous. When you got problem with birth, you recite Angulimala Sutta. Uh, so these are the understanding, okay? So when you invoke power of merit, by the power of this merit, instead of aspiring for enlightenment by awarding all the foolish and heedless, you can modify it. By the power of these merits that I have cultivated since the day I asked for repentance, or since the day I started my cultivation with this understanding, may it arise the causes and conditions for me to recover from my health problem or my financial problem or whatever problem then without you realizing it you do it correctly sincerely somehow the causes and conditions will arise and all these things get resolved it gets resolved by itself that's why a lot of things that happen in life you cannot understand so this understanding is very important so relax and maintain awareness. We are just let things be, don't react. So this is the meditative way, born of understanding that the natural state of mind before it's stirring is always the meditative mind or inner peace, calmness, and silent inner awareness. And the flowering of thought is the very ending of that thought. You know what is the flowering of thought? Like the flower. When it bloom and flower until it's most beautiful, fragrant, you buy, you put on the altar, then what happened? It cannot flower anymore. Then what happened? Decay. Wither all the sun. That is the nature's process. So all this negative mind, you know, is all dependent on anything. Due to your wrong view, you react and stir. We are in the mindfulness, you saw. Then you know anger not you, fear not you. So what must you do? When they arise, don't be afraid of that. Don't go and suppress and push them away. Confront it. Be with it. And that is aware. Understand? Or not? When your thought recall later, that is not awareness. That is the thought recall that you were angry earlier on. But when the anger arrives at that moment, try it. Be aware, silence your mind, stay with it. Like you and the body as one. That emotion that arises, which is fear or anger, you stay with it, you find out what happened. Because that pure awareness, sati or mindfulness, that stay with it, got no thought. It does not fit it with any further thinking. That's why the anger cannot develop. The fear cannot develop. Then it subsides. The moment it subsides, you like awaken. Then straight away you feel the peace within your heart area. The original mind. Tranquility, stillness, peace. I did it in 1988. That's why 89, I rooted it out and cleared all those things. So at that time, I remember, that movement inside was so strong because that, 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 that emotion, it, it was like the, 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 the anger at that time, it arise. Yeah. Then I stay with it. Then I realized it ceased. That there was a lot of understanding of the joy, you know, that this is not me. Dependent, originating, condition arising, causal. Then my true mind has none of all this. 
These are by product of my two minds. When I sense something through my senses, it conditions me to act and stir through my views, opinion, conditioning, memory, insecurity, belief system, all this. That's why I saw in the memory all this rubbish. Then because of that, you become what you are. You become angry, emotional, fearful, and all these things. Then when I did this, it like awakened me. The awareness, sati, that's like the power of mindfulness awakened me. To bring forth this clear understanding that all this mind state, feeling that has become craving my emotion, negative emotion, especially my fear, my worry, my anxiety, my anger, and all this. So when it sees, means the anatta nature, the non-self nature, the impermanent nature, you straight away realize that you know they are all dependent originating. They are not intrinsic within our true mind. Our true mind got none of all this. That's why when you are with the awareness nature, your wisdom becomes different. You got no fear. Anything happen, you stay here. This one is a deathless element. The only thing that can get into trouble is the physical understanding. And the consciousness, when it's no longer able to stay in, it will leave. So even at moment of death or what, no problem. Those who have the Dhamma, no problem. Like I told you, when I experienced that, within there, that thing surface, then I can tell myself, Inside they're empty. He know you, he know me nothing. So, for my mind die, what is it? I can just die any moment. It will not affect me at all. The mind will not go and create the deluded thought, the fear that I have not uh, hand over, I have not done up this or that, that I have unfinished. No such worry on. We have no reality. Empty nature existence. So when you penetrate through emptiness, when you awaken, your wisdom becomes different. Okay? So this is how you meditate. Eh? So you aware, stay with it until that emotion ceases. The very flowering of thought is the very ending of that thought. Remember that. Then the fourth way is to develop the wisdom. Eh? Otherwise, every time you get anger or fear, you have to look for a quiet place go and meditate. And then the fear no more. That's all. But do you have the wisdom? Unless you have your past training, like me, after the third way, I already knew what happened. Yeah. So I don't really have to do the fourth way. Uh, but the fourth way is important for you all, where you all haven't done it. So the fourth way is to the Buddha say, to trace the origination factor of the unwholesome thought. How did anger come to be? How did fear come to be? How did the emotion of worry, anxiety come to be? The insecurity. So when you silence your mind, like the Satipatthana, Sutta, Dhamma, Nupasana, first category of practice, within that silence, the awareness, nature, you can observe, you will know. Then you can recollect or recall how fear arises. Before fear arises, there was no fear. Then how did fear arise? It's normally from that three sense of. Either you see somebody you don't like, you have phobia, then recall to memory also that phobia, that fear arises. Yeah. So either through seeing, or through hearing or through the thought process, it triggers. Because smell and taste will not create fear. It, at the most, it creates dislike. You don't like the food. Yeah. So, hearing, seeing, and the memory, recalling, is the one that triggers. So, it's through one of your sense doors. Then, when you know this origin factor, then you inquire why did I stir? Why did I stir? What else can I do? You want to 
develop the wisdom to retrospectively reverse all this. Because of memory, isn't it? your conditioning, isn't it? your phobia and all this, then you react and you stir and fear arise. So how to stop fear? You must have the wisdom in it. The Buddha say what? Learn to see things as they are. Understand? So when you learn to see things as they are, like I share with you all, the world is the world. Condition like that, things will like that. It can never be otherwise. So because of my accumulated memory, my conditioning, my belief system, I'm deluded, I react, I stir, I develop fear. Who fear? What fear? Why must one fear? It's the thought that is deluded, fear. The nature got no thought, there is nothing to fear. That's why you stay here. Everything subsides, cease. So when you understand, like what I share with you, that wisdom part, see things as they are. The world is the world. People are just the way they are. Understand not? Then whatever arises there are causes and conditions. Why should I fear? This is a reality. I accept it. I observe it. I stay with it. Like the dog, let's say, want to attack you. Uh, very fierce. Or snake or whatever. Why should you fear? Develop mindfulness awareness, silent and look at it. Because this animal, they can sense your fear. When you have fear, they attack you. Huh? They chase you and do all those things. But when you have no fear, you look at them, they just move on. That is how you overcome all this. So seeing things as they are is the wisdom. So you retrospectively, through this understanding, you straighten your view. Then the moment you see, hear, or recall something again, you will not react and stir like before. Where this wisdom will prompt you, Yonisu Manasikara. And this one will tell you the Dhamma. The world is the world. People are just the way they are. Conditioned like that, things will be like that. Cannot be otherwise. This is suchness, tatata, the reality. So once you have this type of understanding, the fourth way, you no longer have to, like every time, got problem, go somewhere, meditate. To cease it. No need. There and then. That's why the four right effort got the first right effort, second right effort. The first right effort is third way. When you already aware that it has a reason, you want to arise the right effort to abandon it. How you abandon it? Third way. Stay with it. Let it cease. Understand that? Then normal cultivator can do that, they will develop the wisdom already. Uh, but if you can't, then do the Satipatthana under Dhammanupasana, the third category of practice that the Buddha say, mindful of what? The internal six sense basis and the external six sense basis. Mindfulness of that. When you are mindful of your internal six sense basis, means your sixth and down. Then the external sixth and basal means the external form. How they come in, make contact and trigger off all this. That is mindfulness. Then you see the Patisa Samopada. How you stir your mind. How you become angry. How you become fearful. This is how you observe with the silent mind. You cannot go and think. Understand? It won't give you wisdom. Right? It gives you knowledge, but you cannot act, cannot do. But when you observe it through the mindfulness, the awareness, then you develop this penetrative insight and wisdom. Then you realize anger was never me, fear was never me. Then who fear? What fear? The thought fear. Then why you stay at the memory here, which is full of rubbish and the thought? You stay with your awareness, no thought, nothing fear. Then you can have the Dhamma to prompt you, the Yonisok Manasik. That's how you free your mind, liberate your mind. Okay? So that's it. Huh?